I had a really fun time watching the movie last night. And Sophie, I really want to get started off with you just by asking you to introduce the movie to somebody who's maybe going into this completely blind and uh, maybe talk a little bit about what inspired you to work on this story. Sure. Hello. Yeah. Um, Look, the film is called Good Luck to You, Leo Grand, and it's about a woman who um, hires a sex worker to have good sex for the first time in her life. Um, And it's about these two people, Nancy and Leo, meeting across a series of meetings and sort of investigating things about their lives, like bodily pleasure and their own bodies, but also their kind of emotional landscape as well. And um, what inspired me to get involved? Look, I got sent a script that was about this woman hiring a sex worker and exploring pleasure. Um, And Emma was attached to it. And I just thought the combination of those two things was completely irresistible. Like, I just thought, there's no way I can't do this. This is everything I'd love to lean into, to explore something between two people um, so intimately. And um, for Emma and Daryl, nice to meet you, first of all. Um, I want to know what drew you to your respective roles and what you maybe learned for from the process of filming this movie Uh, and Emma we'll start off with you first. Um, Well it wasn't the money. Um, (coughs) um, I uh, (laughs) sometimes it is I'm just saying you know I'm a woman I have to earn my living it's very important. Um, No it was it was just the script was so extraordinary I know Katie Brand who wrote the script she's an amazing writer and a fantastic intellect as well and um, and she's she'd written it and said what do you think and I said you absolutely have to make this you have to because it was sort of fully um, formed she'd had the idea and then it had just come out in that way that sometimes things happen and uh um, so there was it was just a no-brainer. I hadn't read anything that ex- that examined this woman who ticked all the woman boxes, the woman-shaped boxes. Yes, tick, mother, yes, tick, wife, yes, teacher, pillar of the community, yes, tick. Mm, excellent, really good, well done. And she's 62 and hasn't had an orgasm. So there's a lot missing. So and and so this is her journey but of course the journey involves her um, dismantling every moral precept that she's built her life on so it's an act of great courage and a not and anarchy so that's what's not to love (laughs) amazing and Daryl what drew you to this role um, yeah, I just received the script um, early last year and uh, I was reading it and um, quickly saw that it was a two-hander film with these two people in a hotel room. And that in itself was an incredible endeavor I saw by Katie and completely obviously drew me. Well, one, I was baffled by the idea of actually holding a film with someone like Emma. So that in itself was quite an honor to even be considered. But yeah, just seeing this young man, I think, in the modern world and, and seeing his ownership over what he does and his love for what he does was something that really touched me. Um, and yeah, he had so much to kind of say for himself that I just I felt I wanted to yeah experience that. But for me, it was quite daunting, I think, holding this film, but uh, exciting at the same time. Mm hmm. Yeah, you did a great job. So you guys both had such great chemistry. And Sophie, I want to talk about that. And what was the process that it came to? I mean, you came to the project and Emma was already attached, but what was it like directing her and Daryl and seeing that chemistry and working with that? Look, I mean, it was a great, great pleasure. Like it was thrilling every day to to work with these two. And in terms of chemistry, like I always find it a an interesting question because you you do need a chemistry and 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 the way that we were um, Emma and I started talking about finding Leo was that there needed to be something that worked between them do you know that we needed to find that but I also really believe that actors you know are skillful people who come together and create chemistry do you know that that is part of their job and they do it very well and so I have a great deal of trust in that and part of my job as a director is to set up the parameters for that to be able to happen. So um, for us, you know, we had the, such an incredible experience of being able to have some time in a rehearsal room, um, just the three of us. Um, and that meant that we could 
explore things that you might not normally get a chance to explore if you just go straight into the script. You know, we did a lot of talking, we did a lot of playing around, you know, we did a lot of exploring what we felt about our own bodies and, and our own lives and, and exploring what the characters had been going through. And so for, for me, by the time we got onto set, we were already a team and these two were certainly already a team. And so we were able to um, together lead the film through and, and make it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really comes off in the, uh, in the final product. So uh, Daryl, my question for you is about portraying the sex worker. I know that you said you worked, you spoke with some people who work in the industry. Um, what was the best advice that you got from this experience and in portraying Leo and from the from the people working in the industry? Yeah, I mean, we were so blessed to have a compiled list of sex workers to speak to um, that was um, organized by Sophie and the team. And um, I don't know if there was any particular advice, but it was more kind of getting to know them as individuals. Um, their spirit kind of rubbed off on me and and that for me was what I kind of hope to not misrepresent in the film and carry into the process of making the film. Um, but yeah, it was just their ownership over themselves, their autonomy, their authority and their love for what they do, their vocation. Um, but I, yeah, I just got to speak to each one individually and, and get to know them and just that was an honor in itself. Um, and I was just bringing their energy hopefully into the film yeah well i think that energy definitely came off especially with the confidence and with the self-assuredness of him in his career so i i appreciated that um and emma i really enjoyed you playing this role and watching nancy's character slowly sort of unfold and grow as the film progressed it was actually really exciting to see her take on leo's uh words and change for herself what do you hope for people especially women going into watching this film who might relate with Nancy on some level maybe not the orgasm thing I hope for you know many of these women um what do you hope they take away from the from Nancy's journey the desire to talk about female pleasure no female pleasure is not something that is considered important in our society um and if it is it's only being sold but essentially for male pleasure, in my view. I think it's very rare that female pleasure is genuinely examined, genuinely discussed. Um, I think that we live in, like it or not, in our societies in America and in, in the West, um, we're built on Christian values and Christian values have traditionally um, <clears throat> denied and indeed pro prohibited female pleasure. That's not the point. Um, and, and actually, you know, the growth of sex work came out, it's men who pay for sex, it's generally speaking, not women who pay for sex. So, um, and that's because women aren't supposed to feel pleasure or um, have appetites actually of any kind, we're not even supposed to eat much. Um, ideally, it would be good if we just ate less and were thin and um, didn't want, didn't demand. Um, so, you know, Nancy's grown up, I think, very much in that world. And she's, she's all of those shapes that I was talking about before the roles that women are supposed to take on. Uh, she slowly finds herself challenging. And what's interesting is she's challenging herself. You know, it's, it's, it's the fact that she's in a room with someone she might never see again, with whom she has no point of of common ground except their deep shared humanity and their curiosity about one another, which is a very mutual thing. And so through that sort of discovery, she starts to meet herself on the way. And she says things that are deeply taboo. For instance, she says, I'm not sure I would have been a mother if I was given the choice. People don't wanna hear that. Nobody wants to hear women say they don't want to be mothers because that's just destructive to everything that we hold dear. You know, everything that we have in our romantic movies and all of, and in all our stories, your know, women have to be nurturing and the mother. And if they're not and they say they don't want to be mothers, it's very, very challenging for us. So you know, you're watching a whole system being dismantled <laughs> by these two people in one room. So the changes that happen are seismic. It's not a gentle thing. It's massive. You know, that's what's so exciting about it. And you can see it and feel it as though you're in the ocean with these people because all you have is two people and a camera. So it's 
it's pure. It's a kind of one of the purest cinema jobs I've ever done. Yeah, I really, I really appreciated those moments of like extreme honesty because I feel like there's definitely, even if women don't feel like it all of the time, there's yeah. definitely been moments where it's like, oh my God, like, why did I have these children? Like, why is my life walking down this path? So I really enjoyed exploring that and seeing her very honest reaction to it and just this perhaps this life unlived especially that flashback or not flashback but when she's recounting that story of her family on vacation I really like that scene that was like a very intimate and also introspective scene for her so I I really appreciated that um yeah and Sophie I just wanted to ask you about directing in that small room and sort of the semantics that went into it and how how that came about (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it was always it was always set in one room and when you get a script like that that's deeply exciting do you know you're like oh my god just to <laughs> act like all that like that's heaven for me I'm like great we can just really explore what's going on with them and and, and their bodies their gesture like those things become the thing um and then second thought you're like oh shit like two people in one room like oh how the hell are we gonna make this beautiful and visual and you know, um, and also not to, you know, you don't want to go for something that's too fancy, but not too trashy. Do you know, like finding that balance of of that room, you know, and and what we brought in from the outside um, was important. So light became really important in it. You know, how we use the light and how the light changes over the time that we're in there. Obviously, these two and and where they go and what they do, and we had the I, we we. We blocked it more than I think I've ever blocked something before. Don't you think, guys? Like we were really sure about where you were. Um, thankfully, um, these two spent a lot of time like going over lines, and they could do. You know, we would do twelve minute takes, so twelve pages of dialogue, and these guys would just perform it like it was a beautiful play. Do you know? Um, but then the camera team would have to find shots that looked good that whole time, you know. So <laughs> it was quite a dance, you know. And I think mm-hmm. it's deceptively simple, a, a film like this, you know. It's um, you're just managing this, their sort of uh, moderating their journey, but also, you know, the, the audience and how intimate the audience feels. You know, we start out kind of much wider and a bit clunkier, a bit kind of viewing them, and we sort of slowly find our way into kind of being more handheld or more free with the camera, and um, and that helps us sort of get in there. But, I mean, I loved every second, truly, like, being on a set <laughs> is amazing, right? You're, like, there every day, and all you're thinking about is the performance. You're not going, like, oh, we've got to move to blah, blah, blah in two hours. You know, <laughs> all of that stuff gets to drop away. And as Emma said, the pure cinema of it comes back, which is humanity like people how we deal with each other how we treat each other yeah I really liked those scenes especially of you know I was watching it and I was like oh I I I love movies where it's just two characters talking and I was excited to see that it was that type of story but I was also like oh wow this must have been an extreme challenge to film and I'm glad that it was so successful because it definitely you can feel the intimacy and the and the conversation between those characters, it feels like you're just a fly on the wall in that room, which is, I think, was the intent of mm. the film. Yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the nudity in the film that we sort of feel like it, it feels like it's a part that we are always sort of moving towards and that intimacy that she hasn't achieved yet, that Nancy hasn't achieved yet. And I want to talk, especially with Emma, about how it felt to to film some of those scenes towards the end especially when she's sort of embraced her sexuality and she's kind of achieved this I mean a climactic no pun intended part of her life um I want to talk about just how that felt for you as an actor and how that worked logistically you know filming wise you know I, we were very lucky because I mean as a team we were very lucky because Sophie and Daryl and I at the right at the beginning we were lucky we had was it three days though three it's five. I can't remember how many days five. rehearsal two what five was it <laughs> oh my god okay <laughs> totally forgotten um <laughs> and and during one of those days we just rehearsed naked we all took our clothes off and oh, we talked damn. about our bodies how we felt about our bodies um 
and after you know <clears throat> at first it feels odd and then of course it doesn't feel odd because it isn't in fact odd it's just not odd to be naked and human in a room together and you know people in in other countries understand that but our countries are very puritanical and odd about nudity which is why we're having this discussion. You know, when we open the film in Norway, no one's going to ask us any questions about nudity because they're just constantly taking their clothes off and rushing into stores <laughs> together. And Germany, I bet you it doesn't happen even in Berlin because they they just, it, they, it's taken as a matter of course, but we, our culture, and which is the where the film is placed, is odd about it. So we addressed it, first of all, very practically in that way. And that was incredibly helpful for me because, Whilst obviously Daryl is completely perfect and it's like having a fucking unicorn in the room, you know, <laughs> I'm not and I'm 62 and I haven't taken my clothes off since I got naked with Jeff Goldblum when I was in my 20s. Um, and so that that was, you know, but we shot in order. And by the time we got to the end, um, Daryl and I knew each, we were sort of we'd held each other's hands through this. So we'd held each other you know, contained one another and looked after one another to such a degree, our intimacy was so great that having no clothes was neither here nor there. Mm. And interestingly, and I think this is, that so will understand this very, very well. The most difficult thing that I had to do in the movie was to be naked on my own in front of the mirror. Because um, I realized when I was doing it that it was something that I had never done in my life, I had never stood in front of a mirror with no particular judgment, not with approval. I mean, she's Nancy's not looking at herself with approval and saying, boy, woof, look at that <laughs> sexy goddess. She's just looking at herself without judging herself. I mean, I challenge any woman to do that and actually do it without moving her body around to look, um, it, how can I change this to make it look better? How can I treat this? And the fact of the matter is we're not used to seeing untreated bodies on the screen. And, and this that was the hardest thing I've ever had to act because I had to act someone who wasn't concerned, who was accepting. Mm. It was very difficult. Mm -hmm. mm. And But because I was with Sophie and Brian, who just was so brilliant at knowing exactly what's brilliant about it is that this is all in the edit. There was never too much. There's never too much nudity. It's never like, oh, that's a little bit too much. It, it's very, very subtly done. And the moment where she's looking at herself is short enough that you just go, oh, and it's quite shocking, but it's also incredibly, well, I find it very touching. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think that was one of the one of the best scenes of the movie because I feel like so often when it comes to women's bodies, especially in media, it's just so, it's just everybody has an opinion, you know, and they want you to have that opinion as well. And like, how dare you not have that opinion about yourself and criticize yourself and judge yourself? And how dare you not immediately accept yourself as well? Like, why do you mm -hmm. see the flaws? Like, you are perfect. So yeah. I, I really like that. And you, I could see that like complexity that was playing off especially in your face and especially in that sort of even in the posture and the stance of sort of like well I have to accept this part of myself but it's also yes. a journey and yes. it's an experience so I yeah I really appreciated that and I really appreciate exploring that journey with yourself being intimate and because you know that's you know not to give away plots points but yes it's it's about being with yourself and being able to live with yourself too in some ways right yeah completely and, you know we're also we are taught so much to hate our bodies you know and all the opposite is like we love our bodies how beautiful are they kind of thing and there's this in between that I think Nancy finds at the end of the film which is that her body does something is there for another reason it's not there to be looked at her body mm. in that moment is not there for someone else's view and what she's learned through this process with Leo is that her body she's allowed to have wants and she's allowed to have pleasure and and her body can do things for her that aren't about anyone else and certainly aren't about how it looks. So that moment for me of looking in the mirror is about this body is not just for someone else's vision or as a photo somewhere or for my Instagram feed or 
to be all the things someone else thinks I should be. It's got me through my whole life. It's got me an orgasm even now. Do you know? It's like <laughs> your body is there for more than just visuals. Yeah. That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. And, and more than just for somebody else's life. Mm. You know, I think her role as a teacher and as a mother and all these things serve other people. And it's very obvious, you know, when we see in the earlier parts of the film that she's like, oh my God, like, I'm so sorry. This is, you know, this is, I, I should just go. Like, this is, that felt very much like, okay, this is like, this, I can, I can understand this sort of feeling in a woman is like, okay, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll just leave. That's fine. Like, sorry to bother you, even though I paid for your services. Um, but I thought another interesting aspect of this film is also perhaps not the objectification, but the embrace of youth in in the film, because obviously, Daryl, you play, you know, your younger character, and she says in the film, like, oh, yeah, like, I can get other guys my age, but that's not what I want. Like, I want someone youthful, and I want to feel young. What did it feel like working on the story and kind of understanding that that was your role and embracing that, you know, he has that confidence that I feel like a lot of young men don't have, and they, he has this understanding of the female body and of the female experience in a way that people men might not have and what was that like exploring that part of that character wow an interesting question yeah i mean i think it all came from the script and the research that we did with sophie but there was a lot of those kind of you know as a young man in the world right now there's a lot of those kind of sentences that came from leo that i was like wow you know these are conversations i'm trying to have with my friends that i feel are on the cusp of new ways of thinking or like you know, I'm trying to encourage more men to kind of see this and, and to see this fully realized young man, not just having them, but really owning them and being able to own them in a sense to kind of part them with someone else who's, you know, discovering them as well. So I thought it was incredibly fresh to see that in a young man. Um, but also in terms of, we don't get to see a lot of Leo's personal life outside of his profession but I gathered that that was where he you know we have our own backstories for that but for me personally that was where he would have obtained that you know and that's through his own experience of putting him out there himself out there sexually and the the, the lessons that we get by you know making ourselves vulnerable in that way so but yeah I, I, I thought it was incredibly like um inspiring to see a young man portrayed in that way mm -hmm. Um, because I think it's often that we don't see men with these, you know, who are just uh, self-aware enough, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I felt very privileged to be able to be be someone to play that kind of self-aware um, and current man. Is that is that mm -hmm. right? Like a yeah, yeah. Just a, just a young man who I hope to see other young young men have, you know, those thoughts and those to come to those realizations themselves. Um, yeah, it was quite exciting. I just want to ask a little bit about the filming process during COVID. Did that play a factor into any of this, um, into the planning of the film, into the shooting? <laughs> I mean, Brian, who's the cinematographer and editor, and I, we flew from Australia where there was like zero COVID at the time, and oh, no. in the middle of the UK and <laughs> lockdown. And, well, the plague was raging. <laughs> Everyone yeah. was wearing those pointy nose things. And, 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 you know, we were all crossing the street to avoid one another. Incense, <laughs> but bells banging. Yeah. But she's not joking, no. no. And it felt scary going over. And then you get there and you're like, everyone's in lockdown, so you can't go out, right? But you, there's so many protocols that come in. So our set, you know, of course, we had masks and all of those things and, um, we couldn't go drinking in pubs or anything, could we? But, um, you know, the it, because we had such a small set and these two were already in a bubble, you sort of forgot that quite quickly. You were just doing your nose swabs and getting down to business, I think. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think for us as well, we had our own accommodation and we were about 15 minute walk to set. And so every morning, obviously, where we arrive at the same time, we leave the same time. So for us, it was quite amazing to actually have a city that was in a lockdown mm. because mm. the film is so intimate and the kind of focus that we kind of had to have every day. Um, 
obviously started when we got to set but in a way we were able to have that because there was a whole city that was a little bit mm. less awake you know in terms of open and mm. and so we had kind of free roam and were able to I guess have that lockdown with ourselves throughout the whole process of the film so I think that was a particular gift I think um mm. that COVID gave us mm. oh no I've, I've forgotten about that but Daryl's right because when you went back you said it was just odd because we had it was so quiet you know we'd be up early in the morning we'd walk to work we'd work all day we'd walk home we wouldn't go out with anyone like you would normally say well to the crew on a Friday night or something maybe let's go out we never did that and the one day we had off because we were doing six day weeks of course only 19 day shoot so on that Sunday we'd go take the car and go and walk on the beach and do our lines and or just mm. be silent or cook a meal so we lived in in a kind of very in confined space which actually helped us because there's a lot of lines so every night we'd have to go through the next and there's sort of acts almost aren't there in the mm. piece. so so there was an awful lot of work it was very intense but I think it did help us in a way. It really did, yeah. That's so that's so true. There was such a ritual, I think, every day because you know, mm. even the, the the privilege to walk to set, you know. Yeah, it was amazing. There was such a ritualistic kind of process of making the whole film that actually by the time because we would walk together, we would talk about what we were about to shoot, we would shoot that day, and then we would talk about how we shot that, and then we would go home and rehearse the lines for the next day, and then we would just repeat that process for yeah. three weeks yeah and so by the time we get to the end of the film where you see Leo and Nancy really intimate one another myself and Emma were totally safe in each other's hands you know um and was yeah, it but... shot in order were you guys mm. doing it all in order oh okay mm -hmm. wow amazing I mean that's that kind of feels like so immersive of an experience and it feels it like it was immersive were... absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Was there any improv with the lines or was it totally like just right off the script when you guys were talking, when you guys were doing filming those scenes together? We weren't improvising. We did a lot of work outside of the script, you know, just exploring. And certainly there were times where in the rehearsal room we would adjust things or things like that, right? Like um, mm -hmm. we, there was no moment where it was like, you guys go for it and we'll find it in the edit. <laughs> <laughs> No, there was no room really for improvisation. I mean, it's very, very, um, the fact that we were prepared, no, I had to learn so much of it before we started. You couldn't come to that and go, hey, well, let's just deal with the material. Let's just be loose. Mm -hmm. No, there was, no, no, it was tight as a duck's ass, that shoot. <laughs> there was no room for any manoeuvre whatsoever. I mean, Soph will tell you, you know, we were really honest. If we did, hadn't known it, absolutely known what we were doing forget it we would never have shot it in the time I mean it was up to the wire wasn't it so right that last shot it when we really shot was like, every, we've just was, about had time to make the sodding thing yeah you know every and, second and, and there was have no wasted time at all no and, and if there weren't two actors who learned all their lines and could do that in that amount like those long long takes we just couldn't have done it you just there are some things that can't be done, but luckily we did, you know, and they worked really hard during the shoot to keep those lines and, and that to be able to perform at that level and, and be remembering all of that at the same time, you know, there's a high pressure in some ways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, like I said, the final product shows off all the hard work that you guys did. And I really, really did enjoy it. You know, like, I feel like I went on this journey with Nancy and I'm very proud of her for her growth and I'm like excited for Leo's future and I want all these things for these characters and I want them to succeed. So I feel like that was a, a good takeaway to take away from this film that was also very uh, funny too. The humor was amazing. So I really want to thank you guys for speaking with me today and I hope people get to watch this film and yeah, thank you. Thank Thanks you. very much. Thanks so much. Thank you very much.